um, the first topic, I mean, sorry, the first thing I'm gonna cover is what we're gonna go, go through. First thing will be tendon layouts, curbing of tendons, anchorage zones, uh, pour and delay strips, slip connections, conduit issues with PT slabs, penetration issues, integrity tendons, which I think are extremely important, which I'll cover uh, with a lot of photographs later on, and then lastly, elongations. Now this seminar is specifically focused on construction issues, so I'm not gonna bring up any um, equations or really any code sections. This is just a lot of things that I see out in the field. Our firm specializes in post-tension concrete, and um, we see this a lot, uh, and so pretty much anything that's done with a building and post-tensioning, we've done it, encountered the issues, and hopefully these photographs of the field conditions will help you in having a more successful post-tension building in the future. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to selfishly plug my book, uh, which was written by myself and my business partner, Dirk Bondi. Uh, this book covers pretty much all we do for a living. Um, during the recession, when we had already searched the internet backwards and forwards, we decided to write a book to kill the time, and we wrote post tension Concrete Principles and Practice. It is a basic post tension Concrete book for the first half, and then it is specific detailing and design issues that I use on a daily basis. So whether you have no idea what post tension Concrete is, or you are a typically a senior engineer who has done it a lot, but would like to brush up on it, this is used uh, to teach PT Concrete at UCLA, Cal Poly SLO, and also Cal State LA. In addition, there's most of the photographs you're gonna see in the seminar are also in the book and explain to further extent. So please pick this up at SK Ghosh, and if you ever see me around, I'll be more than happy to sign the copy for it if you'd like. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is what I do on observations when I look at some of my designs. Now, in terms of looking at a two-way slab, I don't count strands and I don't measure CGSs. That's something the uh, deputy inspector or the rebar PT foreman should do. What I basically do is I take this vantage point, I kind of kneel down a little bit, and at this point, I'm just looking for smooth gradual profiles. The vast majority of our design is going to be uniform loading, whether it's parking, it's office, it's hotels, whatever it is, it's a pounds per square foot. So a parabolic profile is what we wanna see and what we design for. And we wanna see a, a nice, smooth, gradual profile. At this point, again, I'm not looking for CGSs, I'm not checking my drawings. I just wanna see smooth. Anything that's odd or funky is something that needs to be identified, looked at, and um, addressed. But at this point, you wanna see look smooth and a, a systematic and a gradual across the entire system. Now, this is the banded tenon direction in a two-way system. Again, this isn't a design seminar, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the difference between the uniform and the banded direction. But again, from this vantage point, you can look at this banded tendon, look for the profile, and hopefully you can see that at this location right here, there looks like a localized whoop de doo if you compare this profile to this profile here. This one is much smoother, and then if you go over to this point here, there's a little kink in the system. And at that point, just from this pure vantage point, you can look at the shop drawings, look at the structurals, and figure out if the right chair was used, or if the right if the chair is correct, if it's in the um, incorrect spacing or location. And those little, you know, like I said, whoop de doos are kinks that can cause blowouts and cracking. And I think those are the things that, aside from the numerics and what kind of software you're using, can really save you in terms of um, the aesthetics of the concrete and the performance of the structure. So this is what I would typically go for in these observations. In general, you want to make sure that everything, again, is smooth. You have the banded tendons right here and right here. And then also, from a very um, conceptual point of view, again, from the structural observer, you can tell that the span from here to the span to here, let's say, is 15 feet, and this span from here over here is 30 feet. So conceptually, the low point here should be much lower than the low point here. And those are, the, again, the things that I look for. Does the low point make sense? Did they unfortunately use the wrong chair? Did they put it in the wrong location? Are you creating massive balance loads because you have a really extreme low point in a very short span? So these things should match the moment diagrams. So obviously, if you have a short span in this location, you're going to you know, have very low tension on the bottom moments and more tension on the bottom moments here. So again, it's the conceptual thing you look for to avoid uh, overbalancing situations. 